Excerpts from Ancient Forest of the Pacific Northwest by Elliot A. Norse. It's not hard to understand why ancient forests are cut. The giant trees are among the world's finest sources of timber. And although the timber market is plagued by sharp fluctuations, when prices are high, the timber industry brings hundreds of millions of dollars annually into the Northwest economy. It provides jobs and a way of life for many workers. Just as cotton shaped the environment, economy, sociology, and politics of the Deep South, timber shaped them in the Northwest. So important was the cotton culture to planters, mill owners, and workers that they fought the deadliest, most divisive war in our history to preserve it. And our nation still suffers from its effects more than a century later. But in the end, the cotton culture disappeared, a victim of new technology, substitute products, ecologically unsound land management, competition from other regions, and overwhelming political opposition to its practices. The same problems now face the Northwest timber industry. Like the cotton industry during its decline, the timber industry is fighting to maintain the old ways of doing business. Its political influence is still enormous, but it is facing a mounting wave of public concern for the future of our ancient forest. And for good reason, these crown jewels of American forest are being destroyed and fragmented much faster than previously thought. About 87% are already gone. This book was written in the early 90s. A loss far greater than that of the wetlands and tropical forests rainforest whose destruction has garnered far more attention. Timber built the Northwest and the timber industry has almost always had its way. A century ago it acquired the best forests and liquidated them. Most of old growth that remains is on lands managed by the Forest Service and the Bureau of Land Management, ostensibly to the benefit of all Americans. Unfortunately, although these federal laws require these agencies to balance various uses, their actions show that they manage our forest mainly to benefit the timber industry. Agency officials point out that Congress, under pressure from the industry, requires the sale of excessive amounts of timber. To hasten the removal of our remaining old growth, Congress has lavishly funded an environmentally damaging system of logging roads. Sometimes reluctantly, but more often than not, the agencies that comply with Congress directives are mining the ancient forests, destroying them forever rather than managing them as a renewable resource. Although something resembling ancient forest to the untrained eye might replace them, logging destroys them forever because the management agencies will not allow forest lands the many centuries needed to produce old growth once more. Ancient forests are being cut as if there is no tomorrow. The reality is that these ancient forests provide so many benefits to so many people besides fallers and mill workers. From deep spiritual values, to promising anti-cancer medicines, to growing non-timber economic benefits, that there is an increasingly powerful political argument for their conservation. On the other side, the timber industry has never hesitated to use the specious arguments to avoid its inevitable weaning from logging ancient forests. Some elements of the industry have portrayed the old growth question as a simple choice between wasting decadent trees to please a handful of environmental radicals versus providing lumber, paper, and jobs for the good of all. The industry has disseminated blatant falsehoods about the benefits of logging to wildlife. It has painted an overly optimistic picture of its future given that it depends so heavily on a fast disappearing resource that is not being replaced. It has blamed mill closures on environmentalists to divert attention from its own management failures. The dispute over the fate of ancient forests contrasts different values and views of the future. At one end are people who clamor for the fastest possible conversion of ancient forests to cash. At the other end are people who feel that ancient forests have intrinsic value that cannot be adequately expressed in dollars. In between are those who seek ways to maintain both timber production and the special benefits of ancient forests on a sustainable basis. But many Northwesterners do not fit the stereotypes. Not everyone in the industry favors liquidating the last old growth. Most environmentalists recognize the role of timber in the Northwest changing economy, and the federal officials who make the decisions are not always in the middle. The Northwest has a unique opportunity to preserve its diverse biota and forest ecosystems while maintaining a steady flow of timber. 
The Northwest still has intact old growth, and our country can create sound laws that can balance the interest of various groups, present and future. At present, however, there is little semblance of balance. On lands owned by the American people, the timber industry is logging at a record rate. Ancient forests are fast disappearing. Yet ironically enough, industry jobs are declining. To ensure that Americans derive maximum benefit from our ancient forest, the major players, timber companies, other forest users, conservationists, states, counties, large cities, local communities, Congress, the agencies that manage public land, need to re-examine the values of public forest lands and our options for maintaining them. Our decision makers especially need to re-examine the tacit, all but universal assumption that all other values are subordinate to timber production. The National Forest Management Act of 1976 clearly states that timber is only one of the important products of our national forests. Yet the current practice of equating timber management with forest management will eliminate all but a few percent of the ancient forest in our lifetime. Further, rushing to cut everything now not only guarantees loss of their extraordinary environmental values, it guarantees harm to the timber industry in the future as well. At a time of rapid change and uncertainty, our chances of having an economically vital, livable Pacific Northwest depends on preserving our options. Because Northwestern forests recover from disturbances so slowly compared with crops, livestock, fisheries, or game populations, the effects of today's decisions will be visible for many lifetimes. It is foolish to fritter away our options in hope that someone might be able to fix things someday. A more prudent way to provide enough timber, water, fisheries, wildlife, and recreation is to develop a sustainable strategy for preserving and managing our forest land. Sustainable forestry means more than ensuring a steady flow of timber. It means protecting our forest and keeping them healthy to provide options for meeting our future needs. All of us, rangers, senate, staffers, lawyers, citizen activists, loggers, and backpackers are shaping the world for generations to come. Undoubtedly, they will judge us, these future generations, on how well we preserved their options.